Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So I wanted to share my first impressions on the rise of the Ronin. Now, if you guys have been following my channel for some time now, you may already know that I've been quite, well, brutal towards this game. From the very first trailer that I've seen from this game, I think it was in uh, 2022, if I'm, if I'm correct, but basically I was all in. Right, I was super ecstatic until I have seen the very first gameplay. Because after that first gameplay, I have really turned against this game. Because I was not really into it. At least what it showed me. Now, in terms of how it kind of presented itself, it looked fine, right? From its initial gameplay trailer and breakdown, of course. But the gameplay and the beauty and the graphics and the world it just did not interest me. On top of that, it actually cemented my decision and my thoughts, my opinion on this game after the reviews came out. The very first reviews came out, they were not exactly the best. It's just this game was okay. It was just good to maximum just being alright, you know. Nothing truly special, unfortunately. And so I decided to completely ignore this game. So a few months passed, passed by and finally I decided to give in and give this game a try. Proper try. So I've been playing this game for about give or take almost reaching 20 hours. And I'll be honest, I am having a good time with this game. Now there are some problems and fuck me, there are quite a few problems in fact. But there's so many good things as well that really interested me. Honestly speaking as well guys, I have to share about this, uh, you know, my point of view, how I view this game, because I'm a fan of these Souls types of games. This is a little bit of a Souls-like experience, it has that essence in here, but it's a lot, a lot more friendlier. And on top of that, I'll be honest and upfront, I'm playing this game on Dawn difficulty. It's basically the easiest. There's three difficulties, easy, medium, and hard. If you want to have a Souls-like experience that this game is known for, especially being made by Team Ninja are fantastic developers of creating their Souls-like experiences. They already have done so with Neo 1, Neo 2, and I believe it was Wulong Fallen Dynasty, if that's correct. And I Platinum Neo 1 and Neo 2, including the remasters. I absolutely adore those games. But Wulong Fallen Dynasty, I played it, I finished it. I was even going for the Platinum until I just like, I gave up completely since it was not as good. Like it felt rushed, it just didn't feel like a Neo game to me. And anyway, by the time we already got Wulong Fallen Dynasty, I think we already knew that a Rise of the Ronin was in the development. And so I was more looking forward to this game. Well, of course, until I've seen the very first gameplay, like I already mentioned. Nevertheless, so that I have experienced it now, let's get into my first proper impressions. So, anyway, this game being as a Souls-like, it's like I already mentioned, it's a friendlier experience. And I'm having a far better time with it. Now there are a few certain decisions that I'm just still contemplating and thinking is this really made kind of with the decision of the developers or is this just bad game design? Now what I'm talking about is the controls and the layout, how this game kind of plays and how you have to kind of memorize the button layout. Especially I hate the fact that when you're during the fighting the combat, right, the opponents, you have a moment of taking, uh, you know, kind of a block as soon as you do so, like parrying as an example, you have to press triangle. I'm just like contemplating and thinking, why did they make this decision of separating out parrying for special attacks and and just simply blocking as well? That does also parry. It, it just, it's stupid moments, so not very well thought out, at least the button layout. Now thankfully you can still kind of um, go into settings and just implement the layout of the button uh, as you want to, so I'm very thankful about that. So, uh, let's continue. I'm not sure if this is bad or a good thing, but I had to sprinkle it in here. I, have to, I had to mention it. So, I want to be honest and upfront. I do think that this game is quite intense in terms of its combat, because it's very fast combat in both frenetic and quite strategic as well. Thanks, of course, to so many different varieties of weapons that you can have while fighting it's different styles included, kind of like similar as you've seen already in Ghost of Tsushima and a few other games. And of course, including allies are capable of actually joining you through these missions and helping you out. On top of that, there's also 
an online component in here that you can go through the missions you can cooperate with them and just random people online could join you and help you out in some certain missions uh, operations and stuff it really is a nice addition to this game and i think it really works and on top of that i think it's actually well done in terms of the the difficulty when somebody joins you during these missions now, talking about the difficulty, I can't really comment on that, since this game introduces three different variations of difficulties, like I already mentioned, I'm playing this on easy. I do not want a challenging experience, I already had, uh, had enough of that with different and many different of Souls-like experiences out there, right? So I want to lay back and relax a little bit. But due to this, it's also kind of revealed few of the bad elements within this game, such as being that it is quite repetitive unfortunately so that the mission design and at least the way it's structured is very repetitive and i'm noticing this because i'm also going for the platinum trophy within this game so this means i'll have to go through all of the objectives all of the collectibles and i'll have to do everything pretty much within this game thankfully it's not asking you to get like a hundred percent to get the platinum but nevertheless there's still things you basically have to do like 95 percent of everything within this game so it is quite daunting task and this can actually negate my experience of having a good time with this game nevertheless i had to mention it in here because i feel like i'm gonna have a separate video all about uh, rise of the ronin when i'll be achieving and getting that platinum trophy so let's continue on there's a huge cast of characters already a little bit mentioned like you uh, allies can join you right it gives you a chance to see their inter quite interesting individual components and stories that they can tell now i'll be honest as well <laughs> story whatever this is like especially you have a choice and of making decisions within the story of going anti shonen or you can go pro shonen basically you see how you can go through this story and you make your own decisions but unfortunately the decisions are within this game are completely useless i think they should have just completely stayed away from cho uh, decision choosing moments now i'm thankful the way you can still have interactions in terms of choosing the dialect and what options that you want to have a conversation with them especially you can actually have relationships with these allies some of them can actually join you through your uh, through the journey but some people obviously can't fight but they can actually give you a different value and i like that and just unfortunately i'm noticing as well while i'm continuing playing through the story and something happens to a specific character that perhaps i liked and they die right i just feel nothing because the story is just it's nothing special it's just like neo one just like neo two it's just like wulong there's nothing different here and it's unfortunate i'm not gonna say sit here and say i like i was i'm very disappointed because of it because honestly i was not signing up for this game and playing it for the story honestly i was playing this game for the combat and the element of an open world uh, that this game introduces and i think it does that well so, even though the historical narrative is quite interesting, what it has to tell, the decision making can be just completely taken out of this game and I think it would have been better for it. This cannot be a Team Ninja game if it does not have fantastic great bosses, and I do think there are quite a lot of them. In fact, not just like they're bad, some of them, no, I feel like there's a lot in many ways are fantastic boss battles that already have been experienced. On top of that, you can do so with allies or like mentioned with online partners and, and players. It's, it's fantastic the way you can actually go up against these opponents that are far stronger than you as an example. Uh, okay, now, even though there's some goods that I already have mentioned, I want to mention the bad part. This definitely is a bad part. Stealth. Stealth is somewhat... No, it is very finicky. It's so odd. Like... <laughs> so, I noticed this quite early on, in fact. You have a choice. If you want, you can use a bow and arrow. Or you can use a rifle. So, which is the loudest? Obviously, it's the rifle. And so, it even mentions you in a tutorial. If you use a, an, a bow and arrow, it'll, you will be silent. But if you use a rifle, you obviously won't. Until I started playing the game and just continue on playing more and more and more and more. Then I noticed I started using more uh, bow and arrows. I, okay, I started killing enemies silently with headshots. Some of them just, whatever the reason, just does not kill them at one shot. Nevertheless, I ran out of ammo, started using a rifle. 
shot the guy, killed him. And then I'm noticing, where's the rest of the fellas? Aren't I using a loud weapon? I was prepared to go full on frontal assault, but yet nobody's noticed me. And so I, was, I thought, okay, that's hard. So I continued on playing, really not really thinking about it, until I noticed that, okay, something's definitely odd. Because <laughs> there's some moments when you go up to assassinate these people, <laughs> and their, their friend is practically staring at you, but because he's a bit of a distance away, he cannot see you. <sighs> okay, basically the stealth is broken in here. It really is not good. The enemies are brain dead during the stealth moments. Now, they're not exactly brain dead when you're fighting them, because they are quite challenging, but they, they just don't know what to do when you're in stealth mode. And it really, really shows. On top, of, on top of that, I'm also noticing there's a finicky way of actually initializing a, a stealth takedown, because as soon as you get close to an opponent and you press a triangle or whatever you have a button corresponding to basically like a heavy attack more or less and you can do stealth takedown sometimes for some odd reason it just doesn't work and instead i do a heavy takedown but that means i don't actually kill them at one go it's just so many finicky moments in here that i'm noticing that stealth really needs needs to be worked at Okay, so here's not a bad one. Some of the open world elements and content are quite samey and actually quite dull. Because they're basically what you do is collect cats, right? You go through the challenges of using your rifle, of shooting the uh, targets, right, as quickly as possible. And there's also a challenge of racing with your wings, basically, you going through and seeing you actually be able to destroy these targets as you glide right through them. And the other part is basically <laughs> just taking down shit, killing everything. And that's really all you do. And it can get really quick old, like it can really get old real quick. And I do not like that, unfortunately. Uh, you see, there's always some good, there's always some bad. This is why I said this game is nothing truly special. But nevertheless, there's still some parts of it that are appealing, at least for me and perhaps a lot of other people that give it a higher score rating. Now, this is my first impressions. Like, I'll still make a proper full review after I finish this game. Because, honestly, I do think it'll take me a few more days since I just completed the first chapter. And like I, got, like I already mentioned, guys, I'm not concentrating just on story. I'm doing everything within this game, including, like, additional stuff like side content, 100% objectivity, uh, collectibles. Like I already said, my objective is going for the Platinum Trophy at the same time. So I'm taking my sweet, sweet time with it. And because of this, it actually could be a detriment too, like I already mentioned. Nevertheless, guys, do let me know what you think about Rise of the Ronin. I, have you enjoyed it? Perhaps you're playing it right now. Perhaps you're considering uh, picking it up later. I would love to read it down in the comments. And at that, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe. I see you guys all and have a wonderful day.